Hi, people. Today we're going to finish Kylie Jean from reading the first chapter to third chapter. Now we're on the fourth chapter. So let's see where's the forest. Or maybe I can just go in the contents. So let's see where's the forest. 36. Let's find 36. That's 32. There. Chapter 4. Every pirate needs a pair. On Sunday after church, Lucy and I talk like pirates all the way to Nanny and Paul's Liz Gillett farm for Sunday lunch. We are excited about our brand new pirate, pirate crew, but something seems to be missing. What could be missing? Lucy asks, do you think we need a cook? No, not really, I reply. We can always eat crackers. Then I add, how about a pirate matey? Lucy agrees. Aye, aye, me hearty. That is just what we need. Before we can say anything else, TJ starts to complain. Can't you two talk like normal girls? He asks, are you telling me to pipe down buckle? I reply. He doesn't answer me. Instead, he says, Mama, make her stop doing that. Mama just laughs. It's good to know two languages, she says. TJ can't help it. He starts to laugh too. I have to say, I don't think pirate talk is all that funny. Lucy and I ignore them. We have been thinking hard about our parrot problem. So here's what our pages look like. Let's go closer. Then, an idea hits me like gold in a treasure chest. I have a brother who loves pirates, not TJ, ugly brother. He will be a pirate for our crew. I tell Lucy, and we decide to sing a sea shanty to celebrate our good fortune and getting a, in a full crew. Our song goes like this. Oh, I'm a pirate and have one leg. I have one eye. I hook for an arm and ho ya ya. I mean, uh, okay, let me start this over. Oh, I'm a pirate and have one leg. I have one eye, a hook for an arm and yo ha ya. I seal the seas on my pirate ship. I, if I see you and me, you better sail fast. Then we start all over again, and all over again, and all over again. Then he turns onto the scale road. We are almost to Nanny's and Paul's farm, so we stop singing. I think TJ is glad. Mom asks, where did he hear that pirate song? I just made it up, I say. TJ shakes his head. So, if you see these three stars, it means to a different place. When I get home, I make Ugly Brother a special dog collar with bright paper feathers tied all around it. Then I carefully tie it around its neck and I take a real good long look at him. He has the body of a fat old bulldog, but at least he has the colors of a parrot. I explain, you are one lucky sailor. From now on, you get to be the parent instead of the cook. He barks rough. Juan barks mean though, so he is not convincing. Come on, no one wants to be the cook, I say. Please, you can eat crackers and help us find a secret pirate hideout. He barks rough, rough. Ugly brother sure loves crackers. Chapter five, Treasure Island. The crew and I decide decide that we need a secret pirate cove. So we all agreed to make meet after school the next day at my house. As soon as we're all there, I suggest 
Maybe the woods behind Granny and Pappy's house would work. It's very secret. What about your garage? Lucy asks. Kara growls. Those are too boring, she says. Some place a little mysterious may, might make a better hideout. I know, Paula says. What about how about the spooky old house at the end of Kylie Jean Street? I know the house she means. People call it the Black House because the last person to live there was an old name named old man named Bart Black. I love that idea, Carl says. The boys would never find us if we make our hideout there. When I look at Lucy, I can tell she's scared. She thinks the house is haunted. It is creepy. No lips there. But sometimes it looks like all the curtains are moving. As if someone is looking out. Some of the windows have boards over them. The white paint on the house is all peeling off. Showing the gray wood underneath. Plus, it's Halloween time. Everyone is creepier around Halloween. Lucy, Lucy shivers. I'm not going, she says. That house is creepy. Everyone says it's haunted. There are no haunted houses in Jackson Bible, I say, putting my hands on my hips. Don't worry, Lucy. I sure hope I'm right. Kyra smiles and add, adds, remember, the black house is just a house. I know it's a house, Lucy says, an old, dark, spooky house. Paula stands up. Come on, she says. Let's go before it gets dark and we have to go home. After packing a few things in our treasure chest, which is literally just a cardboard box, I call our parent and we set down on the street. We look like a little parade. So they do look like a little parade. See? Like in parades, they have lined up together, and the very last person in line holds something. Or something behind it that's not a person is riding behind the last person. I am in front with my parrot, ugly brother ahead of me. Then comes the crew in their pirate hats. And at the end of my first mate, Lucy pulling the treasure chest in the wagon. I think Lucy wants to be last in line. She's as scared as a pirate on the plank. Before long, which is like this long, we march up right up to our new hideout. I look up at the old house and think I see something in the window upstairs. Lucy has got my imagination running wild. Kara starts to wade through the long dry grass toward the black of the house. Hey, wh where are you going? I shout. So, um, hey, where are you going? I shout. She hollers back, exploring. It might be hard to get inside the house. I don't say anything, but I decide it's a pretty good idea. So I follow her. Paula follows me. Don't leave me here all alone with ugly brother, Lucy calls nervously. Ugly brother lines, but we just keep going anyway. As Paula, Kara, and I turn to the corner, we see an old shed. The windows are so dirty, I can't see inside. So I rub my sleeve on the glass until I can see a small, dirty room. Perfect. The boys will never look for us here. Paula pulls open the rusty door and it creaks and grounds. Behind us, we hear Lucy streak. What's that noise? Just a door, Paula shouts. Come on, it's safe. Now we found our secret spot. The crew needs to vote for or against us. If you think Lucy votes nay, you're right. No way.
she says. Looking at the shed, the garage will be much better. Everyone else votes A. Ugly Brother votes Ruff Ruff. I count his vote as an A, too. The vote is four in favor and one against. Lucy votes is on Tumbird. So our, our hideout will be behind the old black house. Lucy blows out a big, great big sigh and starts to unpack the treasure chest. Paula and Kira begin to move old, dusty paws and watering cans out of the shed. I hide any, everything so that no one even knows we've been there. We leave dir the dirty windows dark so the boys can't find us. While we work, we I have a funny feeling someone is watching us. It might be a good idea not to tell Lucy or the crew. We sell all of our water bottles on an old shelf next to our tin of crackers. We put our treasure chest box in the middle of the room. Inside, gold bed, bead and necklace and fake gold coins glimmer in the dim light. In one corner, there's an old rust, rusty metal bucket. Upside down, it makes a great stool, so I sit right on it. Lucy and Paula pull the wagon inside the shed to use as their seat. Kara finds a little wooden bench that is kind of wobbly. She says, every time this bench wobbles, it makes me feel like I'm sailing on an ocean full of waves. I start walking a little faster. The crew walks faster too. Even our dog parrot speeds up. Seeing the light was kind of spooky, but a pirate captain can't be a fraidy cat. It was just my imagination playing tricks on me, right? Chapter 6, The Gold Hoop. Hmm, I wonder what's the gold hoop. I've been reading up on pirates so that I can prove that cola, that girls can be pirates. And also, so I can get ready for Halloween. Lots of pirates wore a gold hoop earring. Some pirates even wore two. That makes me want to get my ears pierced. I learned something else. There was a famous pirate named Black Bart. I wonder if he could be related to Bart Black, who used to own Black House. We were where we made our pirate hide out. I decide to ask Mama if I can go to the mall on Saturday and get my ears pierced. I'm as nervous as a captain without a crew because I'm pretty sure Mama is going to say no. That means I have to be ready to bed. The next day at school, I tell Lucy all about my plan. I say, I'm going to get my ears pierced so I can look like a real pipe. Lucy gasps. Your mama is going to let you get pierced ears? She asks. No way. I fidget towards the books on my desk. She might say yes. I say hopefully. Lucy shakes her head. My mama is her aunt, so she knows she is strict. Mama always said she doesn't want me to grow up too fast, but my pirate costume won't look very good without earrings. I just had to talk Mama into letting me get them. Can you help me think of some good reasons to get pierced ears? I ask Lucy. Lucy frowns and wrinkles her nose. She's thinking hard. Hmm, she says. Maybe there aren't any good reasons. I can only think of one. If I do it now, then I won't have to do it later, I say, right? Lucy smiles. If you have them pierced, then you have to keep them clean, she says. Eyes twinkling. Parents like to give us jobs to do. It makes us more responsible. That's a good reason, I say. Can you think of any more? Lucy shrugs. Not really, she says. Ask Kara. Kara's busy sh finishing her math homework. So she can't worry about earrings. I have all afternoon to think about it, but I still can't think of anything. I ask Ugly Brother, but he isn't much help. He doesn't do much talking. Usually he just says yes and no. I don't get up to nerve to ask Mama about the pierced ears until Friday. Friday means piece of for dinner. I'm in my room reading when I hear the doorbell. And then I smell some spicy pepperoni. Before Mama calls us, I already know it's time to eat. When everyone sits down to eat, I can't wait any longer to ask Mama. So I blurt out, I need to pierce ears so I can be a real true person pirate for Halloween. Please say yes. Mama makes 
the same face she does when Ugly Brother has an accident in the house. Taking a deep breath, she puts both of her hands on the table. Kylie Jean Carter, she begins. She reads all of my names. This is not a good sign. Under the table, Ugly Brother lines. Even he can tell that Mom is not happy. You are too young for your pierced ears, Mom began. Besides, it really hurts when they punch your ears that with that piercing gun. And there's a lot of work to take care of. Sometimes the holes even grow shut. I start to talk, but Mama holds her end up. I think 16 is perfect age for getting your ears pierced, she says. I'm sorry, Kylie Jean, but you have to be a pirate without pierced ears. Please, 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 Mama, I beg. It will help me learn to be responsible. Now I will, I know I will have to clean my ears every day. If I do it now, then I won't have to do it later when I'm 16. Lots of girls at school have their ears pierced. Kara does, and you know all the beauty queens do too. Mama sighs. You are my daughter, she tells me. Those other girls are not my children. Not everyone has them. Lucy doesn't have pierced ears, and neither does Paula. I look across the table at Daddy and say, Pretty please, Daddy. He shakes his head. No. He will not cross Mama. He will not cross Mama. If Mama says no, then his answer is no, too. I am so sad I can hardly eat my pizza. TJ grins at me. Don't worry, little bit, he says. You'll be 16 before you know it. He's trying to make me feel better, but I am so disappointed. The rest of the weekend, I'm sadder than a pirate stuck on land. On Monday, things got even worse. When I get to school, I find out that Paula's aunt took her to the mall to get her peers ears, peers, ears pierced on Saturday. Now Paula has, to, has a small gold post in each ear. Her baby sister got her ears pierced, too. Can't you believe it? I cannot believe it, either. In six weeks, I can change the poses. Paula says, I already got a pair to switch to. She shows us a little gold box. You guessed it, inside the box are two for perfect small gold hoops. Pirate hoops. I never felt so sad in my life. Chapter 7, Peg Leg. Thank goodness our teacher has a surprise for the class. Pirate hoops will have to wait. Our class has a new pet goldfish. This is such exciting news that I don't have time to think about getting my own ears pierced. We're going to have a special contest, said Miss Corizon. She writes on the board in her fancy writing. Name our fish. Whoever comes up with the best name will win a prize. Who decides the best name, I asked. Our teacher smiles. You all will, she says. For the rest of the morning, we try to think of names for our new fish. We watch him swish through the water in his big glass fish bowl. It has teeny, teeny, teeny tiny gold stones in the bottom of bottom and has a little fake treasure chest. Look in the fish bowl, I say. There's a little treasure chest. That fish is the perfect pet for a pirate like me. Girls can't be pirates, Cole says. We all adore him, Lucy says. I think we should name him Swimmy. He likes to swim. Yeah, but all fish likes to swim, Kara says. Billy likes sushi and bait for names. Lucy shakes her head. Those are mean names, she says. Then Billy suggests Finn and Cole shouts, Yeah! Another kid likes Charlie, but nobody thinks that name would be good for a fish. Then an idea hits me like Bernard goes on a boat. I yell, Peg Leg is his name. I look around, but everyone seems confused. Because fish don't have any legs, I explain. My friends smile and nod, but the boys all shake their heads. Finn is way better, Cole says. Miss Corizon says, students, you are very creative, so we have several names to consider. I think we should vote to decide which name is the most popular choice. It's time to go to lunch now, so we'll learn when we get back. The hot lunch is fish sticks. I'm glad Peg Leg is safe in our classroom.
All during brunch, Cole tries hard to get a request to vote for Finn. He goes to every table. He says every different things at each table. Hey, vote for Finn. You know it's the coolest name, right? Or Finn is a shark name and sharks are awesome. Or Peg Leg is a dumb name for a fish. So vote for Finn. He doesn't come to the table where Lucy, Paula, Kira, and I are sitting. Sitting. Cole isn't going to have any time to eat his lunch, Paula says. He's taking up his lunchtime talking too much. I open up my pink lunchbox. Mommy has packed me a PBJ sandwich, which was my favorite grape jelly. Plus, there's a little bag of goldfish crackers. I gasp when I see them. Look, I say, I think it's a sign that my name will win. We all have to vote for Peg Leg, Lucy says. I know the name Peg Leg will get four votes, but I'm sure more kids will vote for it too. We have 21 one kids in our class, so if 11 kids vote for the name Peg Leg, we will have to name our fish Finn. Since I already know we have four votes, I subtract that from 11. 11 minus 4 equals 7. We need seven more votes. When we get back to our classroom after recess, Miss Corazon has put a little piece of paper on each desk. She says, remember, we are voting for our favorite fish name. The choices are Swimmy, Sushi, pa- Bait, Finn, Charlie, and Peg Leg. She writes them all down on the board. Then we vote. I carefully write the name Peg Leg down on my paper. Then I pass it to the friend. Miss Corazon starts to count the votes. I just... I notice her making several little piles. Oh no, this means some kids voted for the other fish names too. It seems like the counting takes forever. Finally, our teacher writes the results on the board. Swimming, two votes. Charlie, more votes. Bait, two votes. Sushi, zero votes. Finn, seven votes. Peg leg, Nine votes. Yay, our shout peg leg wins. Miss Corazon says, I think your book report has our class instance in pirates. Kylie Jean, our fish will be named peg leg. Cole is not happy, I can tell. He looks like a storm cloud. I feel sorry for Cole. But naming our fish peg leg makes me the happiest pirate in the whole wide world. Chapter 8, X marks the spot. I'm pretty excited that our fish name is Peg Leg. I'm even more excited about my big plan, plan for the weekend. I'm going to have a treasure hunt. Pirates will ha- love treasure maps because they lead to buried treasure. The whole crew is coming over tomorrow and I want to be ready to hunt treasure. Friday afternoon after school, I make a remark my first mate, Lucy, and my dog, Parrot, help out. I start by drawing a pirate ship right where my house should be. Lucy asks, how do you know where to put it? I guess I don't, I say. When I remember something important, I need a compass rose. We learned like we learned about at school. Once we had a week where we learned a, a lot about maps, that's a really important part of the map. It's how you know which way is north or south, south or west or east. Lucy asks, can I draw it on the map? Sure, I say. I pass the paper over to her and she draws the compass on the corner of the paper across from my ship. Then I draw a dotted line across around our garage, past the bird bath, and next to the pine tree. Instead of the bird bath, I draw a little lagoon, and I make a pine tree and a palm tree. I show Ugly Brother. What do you think so far? I ask. He barks excitedly. Ruff, 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 ruff. Lucy gives me a thumbs up. He's the best, she's the best first mate ever. I make the dotted line go out onto Peachtree Lane at the spot where Miss Clarabella's house is. I draw some mermaids. Ooh, I love it, Lucy gushes. What should we put for Cole's house, I ask. Lucy suggests. How about a shark or a skeleton head? I like the shark idea, I say, because he wanted the name to be Fish Finn. Good idea. Then I give her a high five. We make a great team.
Lucy draws some shark fins right where Cole's house could be. Our dotted line goes right down the middle of the back of the page of the black house. Lucy shivers. She pokes her finger down right where the house should be and says, Put the skull there. I do. Finally, we sketch a little island with an X in the middle right beside our hideout. When he got the map, we look at it. Blimey, it looks like a real treasure map, I explain. Ugly Brother is so excited. He runs around the room and jumps up on the bed. Now we need to go bury some treasure to dig up tomorrow. I think we need something special so I get the gold bracelet. Granny gave me when I was an itty bitty baby. It was real gold. That's your good bracelet, Lucy says. Won't your mama get mad if we bury it? I shrug and tell her. We're going to dig it right back up. It'll be dirty, though, Lucy says. You're right, I say. I better find something to put it in. I look around my room. I have a little jewelry box. But if we use that, I'll have to take everything out of it. Then I spy a soft pink bag that Lucy gave me. The top ties with a string. I grab it and put the gold treasure inside. Perfect, I explain. Okay, Lucy says, let's go. Ugly brother is snoring on the bed with his tongue hanging out. So we leave our parrot behind. We pack up the little red wagon with my garden gloves and a small shovel. Then we follow the map we made right down the road, past the mermaids, the sharks, and the skull. Finally, we're in the backyard of the black house right beside our house. Sticking the shovel in the ground, I say, X marks the spot. Digging the it is harder work than I thought it would be. We should have brought Ugly Brother and a bone. He'll dig like crazy. If he thinks there's a doggy bone in the ground, instead, he's taking a nap and we're digging and digging. I take turns with my first mate. The pile of dirt gets higher and higher. The hole gets deeper and deeper. While, after a while, we're tired. I lean on the shovel handle and rest while Lucy goes uh, into our hideout and gets some water. She runs right back out and shouts, All of our crackers and water are gone. The boys found our hideout. I throw down the shovel and run inside. I look everywhere, but Lucy is right. Someone took our food and water. Everything else looks just like the way we left it. The pail and the little bench are still in the middle of the room. Two sets of footprints are on the dirt floor, mine and Lucy's. This is a real mystery. Then I remember I left our treasure on the ground. When I ran back inside, I see Lucy holding the little pink bag. Don't worry, she tells me. I've been keeping our treasure safe. It was boys. Was it the boys? I think so, I say. We better hurry up and bury this treasure. Quickly, we mashed the pink bag down in the hole and shoveled the dirt right on top. Then I put a little white stone on top of the dirt to mark our spot. If I forget where I buried my gold, gold, good gold bracelet, I'll be in big trouble with Mama. I take off my little gloves and toss them in the wagon. Then I place Daddy's shovel right on top. Let's get out of here, Lucy says. This place is creepy. So now we're going to stop on chapter 9. And I'm going to um, um, read this back when I come back from um, going somewhere. So bye. In the same